All right, I've uh, cleaned all the machining oil and storage oil, but it was all covered in with soap and water. Lubed the inside of the uh, cylinders with some motorcycle oil. I got to do what's called gapping the piston rings. And as you can see, the ring goes in and out. And when you have a ring, when it gets hot, they, the rings and the uh, will expand and get a little bit bigger, so you have to set it at a gap. And the gap I'm setting this top ring at, using this feeler gauge to set my gaps, my target gap is for the top ring will be 0 0.012. Second ring, I want to set it a little bit larger. That's going to be the point zero one five of an inch. Those are at inches, not millimeters. So what you're going to do is first to find out is I, I'll take the ring and I put and I push it together, slide it in. Get it right in the middle, flip her over, now you can see the gap right there. Take my pencil, take my piston, I'm going to flip it over, stick it in, now I'm going to use my piston ring grooves as a leveling device. I want to go about a half inch in. I went a little bit further than the half inch. But typically a half inch is what you want to go, at least. Now I can look at that and tell that it's tighter than my target of 12.12 or 12 thousandths of an inch. So what I want to find out is where it is. Shoot for, let's try 10 thousandths of an inch to start here. Okay, we got 10 thousandths of an inch. It was originally 8 thousandths, and I have already started on this one. Start feeling comfortable with what, with what I was doing. This one's 11 thousandths. 11 thousandths, so I got another 1 thousandth of an inch, so it's not, 11 will go, 12 won't, 12 is my target, so, we know we're almost there, go back to 12, try it one more time, just for my own satisfaction, 12 kind of wants to start, but it isn't going, so, this is where it's nice to have I pushed the uh, rings back together and pulled them on out. This is where you want a ring tool for it's a little grinding wheel. It keeps everything cutting at 90 degrees. I don't have one. And I would suggest you using one. But what I do what I am gonna use is this fine file. I'm pretty good with metal. The object is making sure that these ends come together squarely. So I haven't touched this once this factory side here. I have filed a little bit off of this side. The key when you're done filing is like I already said you want to keep it square. You also want to not have any burrs. If you have burrs, it'll catch on your, on uh, especially on a sock. You'd be good to go. All right, so I need one more thousandth of an inch off of this, and I'm gonna be super careful. What I'm gonna do is place it down here. Put my squareness. You probably can't see that. 
I'm using this board as my squareness device. passes I think I did about three passes now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna push it together see how square that was well this side's looking pretty square let me flip it back see how I did it oh that looks pretty good Get her centered, push it together. I have it in there just a little under a half inch. Slide her on in. Piston again. Using my ring grooves as my leveling device. Now, if I already had a piston ring inside one of these, then I could just set it right on down in there. Okay, got my 12,007 inch. Still not going. I'll go to take a few times to get this right. Make sure I'm all, I'm going for the file side. You're using your uh, file or your, your machine. You still got to do the same thing because you you can get them in there sideways too and, and grind this off just a little bit crooked. up it looks pretty good I'm gonna hold it up to the light you won't be able to see that oh, yeah. not bad I'm gonna push the tail or the inside just a little bit deep or not quite deep enough I'm not pushing hard when I when I'm trying to go for any burrs I don't know if you can hear that, but I am not pushing with much effort. Back in the piston, get it centered, push it together, and a little bit, push her in. Going about a half inch, if you can. You want to keep her square. Back to the 12,007 inch. Alright, it's starting to go in, but still shallow. Make sure I got the correct side.
When you're doing a freehand, you got to really be careful. And in this case, light is your friend. <laughs> All right, so that's how you do this. You, you just keep doing it. In and out, in and out, take your time. I would say that a wider gap would be safer than a too tight of a gap. Alright, it's in there. It's not flowing quite as easily as I want it, so I'm going to make one more pass with the file. Two passes. Two passes with the file. This, hit, make sure you don't hit this outside edge. You just don't want to be messing with that. Looks very square to my eye. So even when you're using your gap, your your hand-powered one, gapper or cutter, oh, what you call it? It's a gapping tool. You still got to use your eyeball. Make sure you, if you can't see the groove very well, you need to make sure you've got glasses on or magnifying glass so you can. I think we're going to be good to go this time. Oh yeah. Well, no, let us slide it in there. There we go. Yes, very good. I like it. I'm going to do the second ring the same way. I'm going to gap that. Let's see, I grab this at 12. I'm going to grab the other one at 15 thousandths. The oil expansion rings were already wide enough where I don't have to mess with them or the oil rails. So I'm going to do this one and the other two. I don't really have to show you that. And then on the next video, I'll install the rings onto the pistons. I don't have a ring tool.